The objective of chapter three is to study the donation of the carbonyl ligands and to study the bond M carbonyl. To note that the ligands found on M in the metal carbonyl complexes plays important role in the stability of the bond M carbonyl and the stability of the internal bonds inside the carbonyl. CO, according to Lewis structure, has a lone pair on carbon and another lone pair on oxygen. So CO by theory is donor from oxygen or from carbon. Since carbon is less electronegative than oxygen, so the donation takes place from carbon. CO is a neutral and two electrons sigma donor. But at the same time, CO can receive electrons from the metal if we have excess of electron density on this metal. And to explain this, we have to study the molecular orbital of CO, where we have pi x, pi y, sigma p, two antibonding anti orbitals pi star, and sigma star. According to this electronic molecular configuration, the highest occupied molecular orbital, the HOMO, is indicated by the electrons sigma p. So these electrons are, donate, are donated from CO to the metal. At the same time, pi star x and pi star y are the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital and are strongly antibonding and is low enough in energy. That means it can receive easily electrons from outside source. For this reason, carbonyl act as a good acceptor orbital for interacting with the orbitals D on metal. To remember that the bond order is equal half electrons bonding minus antibonding and the bond order in carbonyl equal half six minus zero so equal six over two equal three. When CO receive electrons, it will receive in the orbital antibonding. So the bond order of CO decrease and this will destabilize the carbonyl. As you know, in coordination chemistry, when a ligand gives electron to a metal. If this ligand is pi acceptor, it can receive. If it receives in the bonding orbital, so the back donation increase the bond order in the ligand. And in case of CO, it receives in the antibonding, so the back donation to CO will destabilize the carbonyl. So in the MCO bond, the donation of lone pair of CO to D orbitals to M and CO is considered as soft ligand, sigma donor, and pi acceptor. In this figure, we have orbitals D of metal in all directions. And here we represent the orbital hybrid SP of carbon, and these orbitals are the orbitals antibonding. The donation from, from carbon to M takes place by this lone pair of orbital sigma 
B and the back donation to the anti-bonding orbital pi. To note that the back donation from M to CO depends on the nature of M and the ligands around M. And it does not depend on CO since CO has an orbital vacant anti-bonding pi star. The donation of carbonyl depends on the structure. For example, if we have MCO terminal, the charge of carbonyl is a neutral and carbonyl is two electron donor. In this form, the carbonyl is donor of two electron to one metal center, and these two electrons are the electrons sigma p, or from the lone pair of the hybrid orbital sp, and carbonyl may be donor of another two electrons to another metal m from the pi electrons. So in this case, carbonyl is always neutral, but in this case is four electron donor, two electron to each metal. So what can we say about this form? This form is a mu bridging between two metal center and also carbonyl act as a bidentate ligand. So this is the form mu hap to two. Carbonyl may be only bridging between two metal center, mu2, and is a neutral. In total, two electron donor from the lone pair of, of carbon, so one electron donor to each metal. And in the, in the mu3 bridging, CO is related to three metal center, so it one electron donor to each metal and is always a neutral. The question now, why CO in the mu2 bridging form is CO double bond? Because when carbon gave these two electrons, the number of bonding electrons in the molecular orbital of CO decreased by two. So the bond order is equal half, four minus zero equal four over two equal two. And in the mu bridging, the carbonyl is between carbon and oxygen, we have only one bond. Metal carbonyl complexes are, are practically known for all transition metals. And the first metal carbonyl prepared in 1884 was nickel tetracarbonyl. But this carbonyl are in general toxic and they are not easy to handle. MCO bond polarity in complex LNMCO. The stability of the bond MCO depends extremely on the nature of the ligand L and on the nature of the metal M and on the charge of L is pi acceptor, so it will decrease the electron density on M. Or if the complex is cationic, that means also that M is poor in electron density. In this case, the donation of the lone pair from carbon to M is favored, and practically we don't have pi back donation. So the structure of metal carbonyl can be assigned as this form, the carbon give, gives the lone pair to M, so the carbon has a charge delta plus and M has charge delta minus. 
to note that we can have these two factors at the same time. In some metal carbonyl complexes, we find that L is acceptor and the complex is cationic. So the electron density around M is poor. The problem is when L, for example, is sigma donor and the complex is cationic and these two factors have inverse effect. In general, the most important factor in the electron density around M is the charge of the complex. We pass to the second case. Suppose L is sigma donor and or the complex is anionic. That means the metal center is rich in electrons. In this case, we have donation of two electrons from carbon to M, but this donation is not as strong in the first example. And since M is rich in electrons, it will pi back donate to the antibonding pi star orbital of the carbonyl. So in this case, we have sigma donation of CO, but the donation is not so strong. And we have pi back donation from M to CO, which is favored. What is the polarity of the structure in this case? Carbon gives long pair to M and M back donate a great part of the electron density. So M will lose its electron density to the antibonding orbital. So the charge of M is delta plus and the charge of carbon will be delta minus. But since oxygen is more electronegative than carbon, it will pump the electron density to itself so delta minus will be on oxygen. In this case, the bond MC is written as double bond CM and the pi back donation. So it's double bond, one sigma bond MC and one is the pi back due to the pi back donation. And the bond in CO is double and not a triple since CO receive, receives two electrons in the antibonding orbital, so the bond order will decrease. And the representation is M, double bond C, double bond O. The types of MCO bond affect the stability of the bond MC and that of the carbonyl. We have three types of bonding, CO, M, sigma bond, M to CO, pi back bonding, and these two modes are common. The third is CO to M pi bonding, but this is a rare case. The position of the carbonyl bands in the infrared depends mainly on the bonding mode of the CO. If CO is terminal or bridging, they will have different stretching frequency mu CO. And it also depends on the amount of the electron density on the metal being pi back bonded to the CO. As a general rule, the back donation from M to CO strengthens the bond MC and weakens the bond CO. So mu CO will decrease in the complexes when we have the back donation. The number and the intensity of the carbonyl bands in a complex 
one observes in infrared depends on the number of CO ligands present and on the symmetry of the metal complex. From terminal CO to mu2 bridging, then to mu3 bridging, we have a dramatic drop in the CO stretching frequency observed in infrared. And to note that for terminal mode, mu CO is between 2120 180. 108, uh, 1850 and for the bridging is between 1850 centimeter minus one and 1500 and this range are typical for neutral transition metal complexes with an average amount of electron density on the metal center the bridging carbonyl tend to have mu CO less, so tend to have weaker and broader infrared bands. So that the infrared technique is a useful method in the metal carbonyl complexes to measure the electron density around the metal center M. If we measure mu CO and we found that mu CO is less than the normal, that means we have back donation from metal to CO, and the conclusion is that the metal center was rich in electron density. CO frequencies depends on the electron density of the metal. And the electron density on the metal depends on three factors. The charge of the complex, if cationic, anionic, or neutral. The nature of the metal M, if M is rich in electrons by nature or poor in electrons by nature. And the third factor is the nature of the ligand M on the metal M is L donor to M or L acceptor electrons. In the first table, we measure mu CO for several complexes and we have only two factors. We have the charge of the complex and the nature of the metal M. In these examples, we don't have the effect of the ligand L on M, no ligands on M. As we observe, for example, for AgCO+, we have Ag+, Ag is S1 D10, so Ag+, in this complex, is Ag1, and the electronic configuration is S0 D10. The orbital of Ag, the orbital D of Ag in this complex is completely filled. That means it has a high stability. So the back donation in this complex is practically impossible from Ag to CO. For this reason, we observe that the mu CO is high. Compared Comparing the complex AgCO plus with the anionic complexes, that means on cobalt and iron, we have high electron density. So in these two complexes, we have a great possibility of pi back donation to CO, and we observe that the mu CO are less than mu CO in AgCO plus. We pass to the second series, 
MnCO6 plus chromium CO6 and vanadium CO6 minus. As we observe, this is anionic. So the back donation is at the greatest than the neutral, than the positive, which is poor in electron density. For this reason, mu CO equal 1860 is the lowest observed for mu CO6 minus. In the second table, we measure mu CO for complexes of the same metal center and with different ligands L. So in this table, we, we don't have the factor of the charge of complex. All complexes are neutral. We don't have the factor of the nature of the metal M since we have the same metal. So we have only the effect of the ligand on M. Comparing, for example, uh, PF3 with PCL3, we observed that mu CO is the greatest for this complex. Why? Because F is highly electronegative. It will pump the electron density on P. So PF3 would not be a good sigma donor to MO and it will prevent the back donation from MO to CO. So in this case, we have poor back pi back donation. So mu CO is the highest. Then we have PCL3. The CL is more electronegative than oxygen. So in the example of PCL3, we have we have less donation to MO. Therefore, less back donation to CO. And we have other examples, for example, amines, and we observe that mu CO is the lowest in case of pyridine. What is the meaning? Pyridine, mu CO in case of pyridine is the lowest. That means in this family of the three complexes, the pi back donation is the strongest in the third. So pyridine is more donor than triamine, more donor than acetonitrile. So if the three factors are in the same direction, it will be easy to have conclusion of mu CO. But if these factors are not in the same direction. For example, we have negative charge and the metal M is poor by nature in electrons and the ligand L is pi acceptor. If the charge is negative, that means the metal center would be rich in electrons. But the metal center is by nature poor and we have ligands L that will pump the electrons of M since these ligands are pi acceptors. In this case, the most important factor is the charge of the complex. So our conclusion will be on the charge of the complex first. Second factor is the nature of the metal M. And the third factor is the nature of the ligand L. This is another example of the electron dense of the relation between the electron density on M and the mu CO, the frequency of CO in infrared. Consider this reaction of reduction of, of complex one to complex two. In this complex, the charge of P phenyl two is minus. So the oxidation state of Fe, 2x minus 2 plus 0 equals 0. So the oxidation state of Fe is Fe1. And Fe1 is S2 
d6, fe0 is s2 d6. So fe1 in this case is uh, uh, s1 d6 or d7. And we have one metal metal bond. So we have eight electrons plus two, 10 plus two, 12, 14, 16, 18. So this complex, the metal center are 18 electrons. In the second, the oxidation state of Fe, 2x minus 2 equal minus 2. So this is Fe0, D8. And two electrons, two electrons, 12, 14, 16, 18. So the two complexes are 18 electrons complex. How can we distinguish between mu CO of the first and the mu CO of the second? In the second, the complex is anionic. So Fe centers are rich in electron density more than Fe in the first. So the back donation in the second complex is a greater and we will suppose to have mu CO less than mu C of the first and this is the case so the reduction of a carbonyl complex by breaking of the metal metal bond shift almost mu C O by 150 centimeter minus one this is a useful example about the measurement of the electron density by using a mu CO in infrared. So the carbonyl region in the infrared spectrum can be very useful for help in assigning structures and for indi indicating the relative amount of electron density present on a metal. Is there a relation between the number of CO ligands and the number of bands in general. If the structure is supersymmetrical, we can assign the number of CO uh, in the complex is equal to the number of bands obtained. But in general, since we have deformations and motion in the complexes, in general, we don't obtain the same number. For this reason, this is a, not a general rule. We cannot know, we cannot know the number of bands according to the number of CO ligands. One of the most important effect in the geometry of organometallic complexes is the trans effect. And this effect was discovered in 1920. The idea of this effect is to compare the donation power and the acceptance or the acceptance power of two ligands which are in transposition with respect to the metal M. We have several cases. If the ligands in the transposition are one is sigma donor, and the second is pi acceptor. So this effect will strengthen the bonds between this ligands and the metal. Suppose I have a metal center and I have a ligand L and another ligand L prime trans. If L is donor of electrons, it will increase the electron density on M. So the probability of by back donation from M to the second ligand L prime will increase. The donation from L to M is great, so ML is stable, and the back donation from M to L prime is great, so the bond ML prime is stable. If the two ligands are sigma donor, we will have competition. So the stronger ligand will weaken the bond of M with the second one. Consider the example 
M, we have ligand L donor and ligand L prime donor in transposition. If L is more donor than L prime, so L will give its maximum capacity of electrons to M and the bond ML will stable. In this case, the metal M does not need to take electrons or electron density from L prime, so the bond ML prime is destabilized. And if the two ligands are by acceptor, they weaken both their bonds with M. So the most stable structure of two ligands in transposition is then when one is sigma donor and the second is pi acceptor. So two trans pi bag bonding ligands will have competition for the same orbital D, electron density, so they will weaken each other by this effect. And the ligands trans to a carbonyl can have a large effect on the ability of CO ligand to pi back bonding. We have also the cis effect by the same way, but in organometallic, the trans effect is more important. The nature of the ligand L trans to carbonyl affect the bond M carbonyl and therefore affect the bond inside the carbonyl. Suppose we have pyridine or amines uh, trans, to, uh, trans to CO. Pyridine and amines are not so, uh, are not strong sigma donors but at the same time they are not good pi back bonding so in this case the co has virtually no competition for the pi back donation with pyridine and amines based on the experiments done in the metal carbonyl complexes especially on the co stretching frequency in infrared the following ligands can be ranked from the best pi acceptor to the worst. The best pi acceptor is NO+, and the worst is amines.